Good morning, and this is Grace from Elwin's ADP program. Today, I'm going to finish the book Stuart Little for you. If you've been following along, great. If you haven't, that's still pretty okay because most of the time I've been able to stop at the end of a chapter where Stuart, who is a mouse that was born to human parents in New York, where he is having little adventures. So far, so good. We've been able to stop in a place where the adventure has ended for that portion and start with a new one. But this last time, I ran out of time. And I had to stop right in the middle of something interesting that was going on with Stuart. So I will give you a little bit of backstory for this adventure. Stuart has gone, uh, driven his car. He's in search of his friend Margalo, who is a bird. And he's gone to a town and he's driving the little car that a dentist had made for him. And he's found this beautiful town. It's so nice and quaint and it's surrounded by beautiful pastures and open areas. And it's just a wonderful place. He really likes it there. He's like, I could stay here, but you know, I got my family back in New York, my parents and my older brother, George. So he's just enjoying it. And the shopkeeper there said, hey, you know, how tall are you? And he said, eh, like two, two and a quarter inches. And he's like, you know, there's a lady here, uh, a nice little lady. And she is uh, uh, writing, her name is Harriet. And she's a lady, but she's about two inches tall. And it's like, oh, really? That intrigued Stuart. And he went for a little swim and was laying by the bank of the lake. And he wrote a little letter to him and kind of introduced himself and said, hey, you know, uh, you're two inches tall. I'm two and a quarter inches tall. We haven't invented uh, that match program or anything on the computers yet because there's no computers yet. <laughs> so, uh, hey, maybe I'll write a letter. And I said, hey, you know, this uh, shopkeeper told me that you're really nice and maybe you'd like to get together. So he, they did get together. And uh, let's see. Oh, I believe I finished just reading his letter. Said so it ended with, if you wish to accept my invitation, be at the river tomorrow about five o'clock. I shall await your arrival with all the eagerness I can muster. And now I must close this offensive letter and catch up with my affairs. Very truly yours, Stuart Little. And he says it's an offensive letter because he's writing a letter. And this and back in these days, people were much more polite. He's writing to a letter, a letter to a person that he's never met. He doesn't know them. And he's proposing that they get together for a meet. And I believe yesterday I said, stranger danger. If somebody contacts you on the internet and says, hey, let's meet, don't do that. That's a not good idea. But back in these times, uh, things were a little more quiet, a little nicer. So it was okay. And if she didn't want to come, she didn't have to. So after Stuart had sealed his letter in an envelope, he turned it to the storekeeper and then said, where can I get hold of a canoe? Oh, I forgot to mention in the letter, he invited her for a canoe ride and then realized later he didn't have a canoe. That's an adventure in itself. Where can I get hold of a canoe? He asked the storekeeper. Right here, replied the storekeeper. He walked over to his souvenir counter and took down a little birch bark canoe with the words summer memory stamped on the side. Stuart examined it closely. Does she leak? It's a nice canoe, replied the storekeeper, bending it gently back into shape with his fingers. It will cost you 75 cents plus a penny tax. It, geez, that's pretty cheap, huh? Stuart took out his money and paid the man. Then he looked inside the canoe and noticed there were no paddles. What about paddles, he said, making his voice sound businesslike. Oh, so I guess he said, well, what about paddles? The storekeeper hunted around among the souvenirs, but he couldn't seem to find any. So he went over to the ice cream counter and came back with two little cardboard spoons. You guys have all had those when you get those little sundaes with the little cardboard um, that They have like little wooden spoons nowadays. The kind you use for eating ice cream on picnics. These will work all right as paddles, he said. Stuart took the spoons, but he was disgusted with the looks of them. 
They may work out all right, said Stuart, but I would hate to meet an American Indian while I had one of these things in my hand. Okay. So just so you know, here is a picture of the canoe on the front of the book. I wondered when this would come in. Here he is. I guess it does work and doesn't leak, maybe. So the storekeeper carried the little canoe and put the paddles out in front of the store and set them down in the street. You wondered what this tiny boatman would do next, but Stuart never hesitated. Taking a piece of the thread from his pocket, he lashed the paddles to the thwarts, uh, which is inside the canoe, swung the canoe lightly up on his head where, and walked off with it calmly as though he were a Canadian guide. He was very proud of his ability with boats and he liked to show off. In an earlier chapter, here he is with the canoe, but in an earlier chapter, he had raced a boat in the, in the river, that, uh, in the Hudson River over by New York. So a new chapter, chapter nine, is called An Evening on the River. When Stuart arrived at his campsite by the river, he was tired and hot. He put the canoe in the water, uh-oh, and was sorry to see that it leaked badly. What? The birch bark at the stern was held together by lacing and the water came in through the seam. In a very few seconds, the canoe was half full of water. Darn it, said Stuart, I've been swindled. He had paid 75 cents for a genuine Indian birch bark canoe only to find that it leaked. Darn, 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 he muttered. Then he bailed out his canoe and hauled it up on the beach for repairs. He knew he couldn't take Harriet out on a leaky canoe. She would not like that. Tired though he was, he climbed a spruce tree and found some spruce gum. With this, he plugged the seam and stopped the leak. Even so, the canoe turned out to be a cranky little craft. If Stuart had not had plenty of experience on the water, he would have gotten into serious trouble. Skip the page <laughs> with it. It was a tippy boat, even for a souvenir. Stuart carried out stones from the beach down to the water's edge and ballasted the canoe with stones until it floated evenly and steadily. He made a backrest so that Harriet would be able to lean back and trail her fingers in the water if she wished. So you see, he's got a little piece of wood here. He made a backrest for the person to lay very nicely. And so, uh, he, so she could trail her fingers in the water. Who doesn't love to do that? He also made a pillow by tying one of his clean handkerchiefs around some moss. Then he went for a paddle to practice his stroke. He was angry that it didn't have that he didn't have anything better than a paper spoon for a paddle. But he decided that there was nothing he could do about it. That's a good attitude. He wondered whether Harriet would notice that his paddle was really just an ice cream spoon. <sighs> All that afternoon, Stuart worked on the canoe, adjusting ballast, filling seams, and getting everything ship shaped for the morrow. He could think of nothing else but his date with Harriet. Mm -hmm. At supper time, he took his axe, felled a dandelion, opened a can of deviled ham, and had a light supper of ham and dandelion milk. So here he has his supper. I'm trying to get it in the light correctly. So you see him chopping down the dandelion that he's going to get the milk from. Have we all seen inside dandelions? They have a milky substance. And he had a little tin can of some deviled ham and he ate that. After supper, he propped himself up against a fern and bit off some spruce gum for a chew and lay there on the bank dreaming and chewing gum. In his imagination, he went over every detail of tomorrow's trip with Harriet. With his eyes shut, he seemed to see the whole occasion plainly, how she would look when she came down the path to the water, how calm and peaceful the river was going to be in the twilight, how graceful the canoe would seem drawn up on the shore. In imagination, he lived every minute of their evening together. They would paddle to a large water lily pad upstream, and he would invite Harriet to step out on the bed and sit a while. Stuart planned to wear his swimming trunks under his clothes so that he could dive off the lily pad into the cool stream. 
he would swim the crawl stroke up and down and all around the lily pad while Harriet watched, admiring his ability as a swimmer. Stuart chewed this Bruce gum very rapidly as he thought about this part of the episode. And here he's imagining the, her sitting on the lily pad and him doing the crawl, which I believe is a swimming stroke where you're kind of on your side, but you put your arm over and then you put the other arm underneath the water and pull yourself forward. So uh, that's what he's imagining. And he's got some little polka dots on his swim trucks here. Suddenly, Stuart opened up his eyes and sat up. He thought about the letter he had sent and wondered whether it had even been delivered. Uh-oh. It was an unusually small letter, of course, and it might have even gone unnoticed in the letterbox. This idea filled him with fears and worries. But soon he let his thoughts return to the river. As he lay there, a whippoorwill began to sing on the opposite shore. Darkness spread over the land, and Stuart dropped off to sleep. The next day dawned cloudy. Stuart had to go up to the village to have the oil changed in his car, so he hid the canoe under some leaves, tied it firmly to a stone, and went off on his errand, still thinking about Harriet and wishing it were a nicer day. The sky looked rainy. Stuart returned from the village with a headache. Oh, there's people here that have headaches, right? But he hoped it would be better before five o'clock, his headache, that is. He felt rather nervous, as he had never taken a girl canoeing before. He spent the afternoon lying around camp, trying on different shirts to see which looked the best on him, and combing his whiskers. He would no sooner get a clean shirt on than he would discover that it was wet under the arms from nervous perspiration, and we have to change it for a dry one. He put on a clean shirt at 2 o'clock, and another one at 3 o'clock, and another at a quarter past four. Where's all this perspiration coming from, I wonder? He's nervous. This took up most of the afternoon. As five o'clock drew near, Stuart grew more and more nervous. Stuart kept looking at his watch, glancing up the path, and fidgeting. The day had turned chilly, and Stuart was almost sure that there was going to be rain. He couldn't imagine what he would do if it should rain just as Harriet Ames showed up to go canoeing. At last, five o'clock arrived. Stuart heard someone coming down the path. It was Harriet. She had accepted his invitation. Yay! Yay! Stuart threw himself down against a stump and tried to strike an easy attitude as though he were unassuming and accustomed to taking girls out. He waited until Harriet was within a few feet of him and then got up. Hello there, he said, trying to keep his voice from trembling. Are you Mr. Little? asked Harriet. Not really. Is there a lot of other mice wearing suits around? Yes, said Stuart. It's nice of you to come. Well, it was very good of you to ask me, replied Harriet. She was wearing a white sweater, a tweed skirt, short white wool socks, and sneakers. Her hair was tied with a bright colored handkerchief and Stuart noticed that she carried a box of peppermints in her hand. So here's Stuart trying to look cool while he's leaning up against the stump of the tree and Harriet arriving with the box, which has peppermints in them. Hmm. Oh, not at all, glad to do it, Stuart said of his invitation. I only wish we had better weather. Looks rather sticky, don't you think? Lewis Stewart was trying to make his voice sound as though he had an English accent. Oh, I'll have to try that again. Oh, not at all. Good to do it. I, I can't do it. <laughs> Harriet looked at the sky and nodded. Oh, well, she said, if it rains, it rains. Sure, repeated Stuart. If it rains, it rains. My canoe is a short distance up the shore. May I help you over the rough places on the path? Stuart was a courteous mouse by nature but Harriet said she didn't need any help. She was an active girl and not at all inclined to stumble or fall. Well, that's good. Stuart led the way to where he had hidden the canoe and Harriet followed. But when they reached the spot, Stuart was horrified to discover that the canoe was not there. Ah, it had disappeared. Stuart's heart sank. He, he felt like crying. The canoe is gone, he groaned. Then he began racing wildly down the bank, looking everywhere. 
Harriet joined in the search, and after a while they found the canoe, but it was a mess. Oh my goodness, there's a picture. So here he finds that it's not there where he left it. And then if you can see the canoe, it is a mess there. Oh my. Uh, that someone had been playing with it. You know, like probably a big person who the canoe would look like a toy to. Uh, a long piece of heavy string was tied to one end. They probably dragged it along with that. The ballast rocks were gone. The pillow was gone. The backrest was gone. All the spruce gum had come off this, of the seam. Mud was all over everything, and one of the paddles was all bent and twisted. Man, it was just a mess. It looked just the way a birch bark canoe looks after some big boys are finished playing with it. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Oh, oh thank you. It's just a little, little throat cough. Sorry. Stuart was heartbroken. He did not know what to do. He sat down on a twig and buried his head in his hands. Oh, gee, he kept saying, oh, gee whiz. And see, the picture at the bottom of Stuart looking all sad there on the little twig. Oh, poor Stuart, all his beautiful plans. What is the trouble, asked Harriet. Miss Ames, said Stuart in a trembling voice. I assure you had everything beautifully arranged, everything. And now look. Well, Harriet was for fixing up the canoe and going out on the river anyway, but Stuart couldn't stand the idea. It's no use, he said bitterly. It wouldn't be the same. The same as what, asked Harriet. The same as the way it was going to be when I was thinking about it yesterday. I'm afraid a woman can't understand these things. Look at that string. It's, it's tied out so tight I could never get it off. Well, suggested Harriet, couldn't we just let it hang over in the water and trail along after us? Stuart looked at her in despair. Did you ever see an Indian paddling along in some quiet, unspoiled river with a great big piece of rope hanging down in the water? He asked. We could pretend we were fishing, said Harriet, who didn't realize that some people are fussy about boats. I don't want to pretend I'm fishing, cried Stuart, desperately. Besides, look at that mud. Look at it. He was screaming now. Man, he's upset. Look, she's trying to cheer him up there. See? She's, she's not having a fit about it, but you know how when you get so set in your mind and then it doesn't work out, it's really kind of heartbreaking, isn't it? Harriet sat down on the twig beside Stuart. She offered him a peppermint, but he shook his head. Well, she said, it's starting to rain, and I guess I'd better be running along if you're not going to take me battling in your canoe. I don't see why you have to sit here and sulk. Would you like to come up to my house? After dinner, you could come and take me to the dance at the country club. That might cheer you up. No, thank you, replied Stuart. I don't know how to dance. Besides, I plan to make an early start in the morning. I'll probably be on the road at daybreak. Are you going to sleep out in all this rain? asked Harriet. Certainly, said Stuart. I'll crawl in under the canoe. <sighs> Harriet shrugged her shoulders. Well, she said, goodbye, Mr. Little. Goodbye, Miss Ames, said Stuart. I am sorry our evening on the river had to end like this. So am I, said Harriet. And she walked away along the wet path toward Tracy's Lane, leaving Stuart alone with his broken dreams and his damaged canoe. So here she is walking away in her nice little outfit. She's got a scarf over her head because it's raining a little. And, uh, you know, I've been where Stuart was. You know, you got everything all planned out and things don't come out great. So that was sad. Now, this is this chapter 15. I think so. I don't get my Roman numerals very well, apparently. But we'll go with 15 as it's a t X and a V. And this chapter is titled Heading North. Stuart slept under the canoe that night. He awakened at four to find that the rain had stopped. The day would break clear. Already the birds were beginning to stir and make bright sounds in the branches overhead. Stuart never, le never let a bird pass without looking to see if it was Margolo. At the, end of, at the edge of town, he found a filling station and stopped to take on some gas. Five, please, said Stuart to the attendant. 
The man looked at the tiny automobile in amazement. Five what? Five drops, said Stuart. But the man shook his head and said that he couldn't sell such a small amount of gas. Well, why can't you, demanded Stuart. You need the money and I need the gas. Why can't we work out something between us? The filling station man went inside and came back with a medicine dropper. Stuart unscrewed the cap of the gas tank and the man put in five drops of gasoline. Never done anything like this before, he said. Better look at the oil, too, said Stuart. After everything had been checked and the money had been paid, Stuart climbed in, started the engine, and drove out onto the highway. The sky was growing brighter, and along the river, the mist of morning hung in the early light. The village was still asleep. It was out early. Stuart's car purred along smoothly. Stuart felt refreshed and glad to be on the move again. Half a mile down the road forked. So he had to decide which day to go. But first, let me show you the filling station attendant there. He's uh, looking at Stuart's little tiny car, and he managed to get some gas in it, so that's good. I wonder how long he can go on five drops of gas. So the one uh, fork in the road seemed to go off toward the west. The other road continued north. Stuart drew up to the side of the northbound road and got out to look the situation over. To his surprise, he discovered that there was a man sitting in the ditch, leaning against a signpost. The man wore spurs on his legs, like, you know, the ones you wear when you ride horses, like the old cowboys used to wear. He also wore a heavy leather belt, and Stuart realized that he must be a repairman for the telephone company. So here's the guy sitting here, and he's in the ditch by a telephone pole. So they would use those spurs to kind of dig into the pole as they climb up. Let's see. Ta -ta. Good morning, said Stuart in a friendly voice. The repairman raised one hand to his head in a salute. The Stuart sat down in the ditch beside him and breathed deeply the, the fresh, sweet air. It's going to be a fine day, he observed. Yes, agreed the repairman, a fine day. I am looking forward to climbing my poles. I wish you fair skies and a tight grip, said Stuart. By the way, do you ever see any birds at the top of your poles? Yes, I see birds in great numbers, replied the repairman. Well, if you ever run across a bird named Margolo, said Stuart, I'd appreciate it if you would drop me a line. Here's my card. He's got a card? Describe the bird, the repairman said, taking out a pad and pencil. Brown, said Stuart. Brown with a streak of yellow on her bosom. Know where she comes from, asked the man. She comes from fields once tall with wheat, from pastures deep in fern and thistle. She comes from bales of meadow sweet, and she loves to whistle. The repairman wrote it all down briefly. Fields. Wheat, pastures, fern and thistle, bales, meadow sweet, enjoys whistling. Then he put the bad pad back in his pocket and tucked Stuart's card away in his wallet. I'll keep my eyes open, he promised. Stuart thanked him. They sat for a while in silence. Then the man spoke. Which direction are you headed? He asked. North, said Stuart. North is nice, said the repairman. I've uh, always enjoyed going north. Of course, southwest is a fine direction, too. Yes, I suppose it is, Stuart, said Stuart thoughtfully. And there's east, continued the repairman. I once had an interesting experience on an easterly course. Uh, what do you think about it? You want, to want me to tell you about it? No, thanks, said Stuart. The repairman seemed disappointed, but he kept right on talking. There's something about north, he said, something that sets it apart from all other directions. A person who is heading north is not making any mistake, in my opinion. That's the way I look at it, Stuart said. I'd rather expect that from now on I shall be traveling north until the end of my days. Well, worse things than that can happen to a person, said the repairman. Yes, I know, answered Stuart. Following a broken telephone line north, I have come upon some wonderful places, continued the repairman. Swamps where cedars grow and turtles wait on logs, but not for anything in particular. 
fields bordered by crooked fences, broken by years of standing still, orchards so old they have forgotten where the farmhouse is. In the north, I have eaten my lunch in pastures rank with ferns and junipers, all under the fair skies with a wind blowing. My business has taken me into spruce woods on winter nights where the snow lay deep and soft, a perfect place for a carnival of rabbits. I have sat at peace on the freight platforms of railroad junctions in the north in the warm hours and with the warm smells. I know fresh lakes in the north, undisturbed except, except by fish and hawk, and of course, by the telephone company, which has to follow its nose. I know all of these places well. They are long away from here. Don't forget that. And a person who is looking for something who is looking for something doesn't travel very fast. That's perfectly true, said Stuart. Well, I guess I'd better be going. Thank you for your friendly remarks. Not at all, said the repairman. I hope you find that bird. And here is Stuart heading off to the north, I guess. Nice area, it looks like, huh? Okay, Stuart rose from the ditch. Oh, he said, not at all. So I hope you find that bird. Did I read that part? I hope you find that bird. Stuart rose from the ditch, climbed into his car, and started up the road that led toward the north. The sun was just coming up over the hills on his right. As he peered ahead into the great land that stretched before him, the way seemed long, but the sky was bright, and he somehow felt that he was headed in the right direction. And that's where the book ends. Uh, apparently, there might be another book. I hope he does find Margolo, but it seems like he's quite content to head off to the north and see what happens. As you can see, that Stuart likes to get into adventures, some of them scary, some of them fun, some of them very interesting, some of them romantic. So I hope that he finds Margolo eventually. And we will be getting another book perhaps next time. You guys would like me to read you the Charlotte's Web, also by E.B. White, who, if I didn't remind everybody, E.B. stands for Elwin Brooks. That's right. The guy that wrote these great books is named Elwin. Cool. So I hope you enjoyed Stuart Little. I know when I was young, I did. And it's too bad he didn't get to... Uh, go out on the canoe with his little friend Harriet, but, you know, in the long run, he's really looking just for his friend Margolo, so hopefully he'll find her. So, I hope you enjoyed Stuart Little. We'll, uh, yeah, yes. You did like it? Oh, thank you for saying that, Matt. Right. And other people are probably asleep by now, sorry, but uh, it's okay, and if you liked it, but this is the first time you've heard of it, um, I did read the entire book, and you can find that on the live stream days. And look up for, you know, when it's going to have some reading on it. So hopefully you like that and we'll read you another book too. Yes. So you guys have a great day. And tell your friends to try to get a job at Ellen. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. do we're gonna find out if objects float 
or they sink in water. Okay. So, so let's start with, what are we going to start with? Maybe this? The floating. The float do you think sink? this is going to, you guys tell me, what do you think? Is this going to float or is yeah. it going to sink? Yeah. Okay, Matt, Nara, can you come and put this in the water for me? Yeah. And let us know if this is going to float or sink. I do it. There you go. I know. I'm loving. Give it up for Matt. Yeah. All right. Okay, I'm going to step to the side. You hold this and step in here. And I want you to lay it right on top of the water. Just lay it there softly. What did it do, Matt? Did it go all the way down? Is or it, is it sinking up? or is it floating? Go up. It's going up, so it's floating. It's floating. Oh, no. So that's oh, an object that would float. Okay. Awesome. So I'm going to take this out. Thank you, Matt. Who else can I get help from? Come on, Vicki. Come on, Vicky. Come on, yeah. Can you come around this way with us, Vicky? Come on around. So, can you pick an item from the table and tell us what you're picking? What do you want to pick? What is that? Dolphin. Is the dolphin gonna float or sink? Sink. It's sink. It's sink. Yeah. It's sink. Good job, Vicky. Good job. Good job. Thank you, Travis. Can you come over with us? Let's go, Mr. Man. Get your star big debut. Yes. So come on in with us. And you can pick up any item right here. And can you let them know which item you picked up first? Which one what do you want? To choose? The button. And do you think that's going to float or sink? Sink. Okay, let's see. Put it on. He said it's going to sink. Well, what are the oh. results? Did it sink? Oh. It floated. Oh, yeah. Good job, Travis. Thank you. So Travis's button floated. Thank you for your help. Want to do one more? No. Okay. Who's next? Shannon, let's go. Oh, come on, Mrs. Leishner. Can you tell us, can you pick something from over here? And tell us what you picked. Which one do you want? Okay, is grab. That, is that another button? It looks like another button. Okay, is that gonna sink or is it gonna float? Float. Okay, Hello, put it on sink. top. Let's Hi. see. Ooh. Oh, tricky! Ooh. Shannon's button sunk. What? It oh, went God. underwater. Is it maybe because of the shape? What do you Travis, think? Travis, Travis is was floated, squared. and hers was round, oh, and, it and it sunk. That's pretty cool, huh? <laughs> Want to pick another one? What do you see? Okay, so she's got a little plastic tube. Do you think that's going to sink or float, Shannon? Sink. Okay, put it in. Let's see. <gasps> oh, so what happened? What happened? Is it, is, it, sink? is it down there with the button or is it on top of the water? On Look. top of the water. Sometimes yeah, it's so floating. it's floating. You can top it right here. Pretty cool, huh? Shannon. <laughs> Shannon, look, look right down here. there. It's, float it's, yeah, on top. it's floating. You see that? Oh, God. Is that pretty cool? <laughs> <laughs> Thank it's you, tricky. Shannon. Yeah, good job, Shannon. Katie, can you come help me? Yay! Come on, Katie. Come on, Katie. 
All right, here comes Katie. Come on, Katie, Katie. Okay, Katie, what do we want to pick? Right here. Katie picked the rock. Do you think it's going to go to the bottom or stay on top? Okay, ready? Whoa, oh, yeah. Katie, that went down it fast. Went down. Huh? Oh my goodness. Want to try one more thing? <laughs> yeah. Which other thing? The straw. Oh. Let's see what that does. Whoa. Did it sink or is it floating? Oh. It's floating. floating. Good, job. Good job, Katie. Thank you. Ken Webster, can you come help us? I think I should clear some out. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Ken, take a pick over here, and can you tell us what your item might do? Oh, this. Okay, what is, what that? is that? A cup. Is it going to float or sink? Oh, oh, it's floating like a boat, huh? Do you know why does it float? Wow. Why is it floating? Gravity. Okay, and is that is that light or is that heavy? Light. Right. How about if you try to put this quarter in there? See if it'll go down a little. It went where? Okay. What did it do? Can you pull that up for me? Your no, your mask, please. Thank you. So what did it do? Go down. It went down because is a quarter kind of heavy? Or it's light. It's light? Okay. But between the cup and the quarter, which, which one's, one's heavier? heavier? The quarter's heavier. This is a lighter weight. There you yeah. go. Fix this for me. Okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Ken. Okay. All right. Who else do I have? Come on, Timothy. Okay. All right, Timothy. Come this way, Tim. Where'd you go, buddy? Okay, can you pick something from here and put it in the water? Right here? Mm-hmm. Okay. Think it's going to sink or float? Go. Okay, let's see. Ooh, uh, Put it in there. Here, it's a nickel. Whoa! Um, what did it do? It's. It, did it sink to the bottom or did it float? Float. Okay, floating means it's on top of the water. Is it on the top or on the bottom? Bottom. Yeah. Um, so that means that it sunk to the bottom. Okay. Good. Do you want to try one more? Yeah. You're rock. really interested oh, in that gonna rock. Try the rock. So what did that do? Is it on the top or so the bottom? On the top or bottom? Bottom. The bottom. bottom. Very good. Thank you, Tim. Are you floating everything and sinking everything? And yeah. Yeah. Timothy will try to put the cup at the bottom. Thank you, Tim. Good job. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, who else do I have over here? Matt Matthias. Come on down. Come on down. <laughs> You're the next contestant. <laughs> okay, Mr. Matt, you are the next contestant on the sink or float. <laughs> yeah. So what are you gonna choose, Mr. Matthias? Out of this stuff. The lemon. Do you think that's gonna sink or stay on top of the water? Oh, tough, I think. Okay, oh, let's tough. see. Ooh, okay, let's let's make a deal. No, boy, if it deal. sinks, if it sinks okay. on this on, side, hold on, hold on. listen, listen to our deal. Oh. If it sinks, you're gonna say go Dodgers. Oh, ah. right. Okay. Right. Okay. Let's go. Let's try. Is it oh playing? my goodness! What is Don doing? Don. <laughs> Come on, 
Simon did not Come float on. and oh sung. Come on, and if it floats, I'll say go angels. No. <laughs> 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 okay, let's go, Maria or Come on, Maria. Maria, Maria. <laughs> that is such a good sport. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Turn around and go. Good sport, buddy. That's you like that song too, Katie. Me too. <laughs> Here comes Maria. Here comes Maria. What's up? You got Katie in the background singing that song. <laughs> Maria, Maria. Here comes Maria. <laughs> Or are you gonna turn around? All right. Here she comes. Ta -da. Come on, Miss Maria. She's gonna play in the water. Are you coming to play on the water with me? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go over here by Vanessa. Yeah, I said this way, Maria. Come over by Vanessa. This oh, I don't think it'll go in between the table. The table legs are in her way for walking. Can you go over by Vanessa? <laughs> All right. All right, there you go. Oh, there you go. There you go. All right, what are you going to choose? There's noodles. There's a... Uh, Dime. There's um, bean. Meat. Little what ground meat. A bean. There's paper clip. Little yarn. Or ribbon. Ring, ribbon. A toothbrush. toothbrush. Or paper. Please, please, paper. Please. Which one are you going to choose, Maria? The dime. Do you think is it gonna flow? Is it gonna be on top of the water, or is it gonna go at the bottom of the water? Oh, did you see that, guys? The water. Pretty yeah. good. That water's getting full. What do you think it's gonna happen? Is it gonna go at the bottom of the water, or is it gonna stay on the top of the water? The top. Of the water. The top. Okay, so Maria's see. prediction is. Are you gonna say go Dodgers for me too? <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> okay, let's go, Maria. Let's see. Put it in the water. Put it in the water. Oh, Maria. Oh, Maria. Oh, Maria. Oh, Maria. Oh, Maria. Oh, Maria. Oh, 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 uh huh. Let's see if that'll float. There you go. Yes, so now I have to it. say, Go, Angel. <laughs> She's a witch. <laughs> so, yeah, the, the dime was a little bit heavier, and the ribbon is pretty light. Pretty That's cool. Huh? Yeah, it's it's floating. Light. That's cool, huh? Can you pull this up over scroll. your nose? Can I help you? There you go. Awesome. Awesome Good job, job Maria. Go. Yeah, some, can you help her while I... Okay, let's see. Let's go back to your seats. Yeah. Just get some more family. I just want to get some... Yeah. Oh, sure. Okay, I'm back. Good job. Right. Who's next? Who hasn't come up here? I think we've had them all. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah.
<laughs> demand. You got to redeem yourself. Come on, come on. <laughs> come on, man. You got to redeem yourself. Matt, I'll go a few go. Great job. Hey, you got to do one more, and she said she'll do it. Come on. Let's go now. Let's go now. Okay, so Laura's Laura's going to pick hers. Okay, Laura. We have the toothbrush, noodles, beads, and a piece of paper wow. and a paper clip. Ooh, this is a good job. Not the decision. I'm gonna. I'm Italian, so I'm gonna go with the noodles. I wanna see. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, no? All right, let's see. Are we watching? I have a feeling it's going to float. What do you think, Matt? Oh, Matt. Let's see. Go ahead, Jake. Go Jake. Oh, 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 it floated oh, up. Oh, it oh, oh, so we have to get in. Go, go in, in Joe. No. So that one. Oh, 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 oh. Now let's see let's if it's going to be Laura. Go, go Angel. Go. 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 Oh, it's loading. It's loading. It's loading. Oh, it's loading. Oh, that tricked us. Who did it? Because it's loading. Oh, and it's no, loading. No. If you let the water go oh. inside of the noodle, no, it's loading. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. Ah. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Ah. 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 So, as you can see, have have. as you can see, we're very much sports fans here. <laughs> Elwin. Yeah. And so it looks like so far we're tied with angels and dodgers. No, let's give it this one. Okay, okay, okay guys. I'm going to ask the, the clients. Okay. They, they think the paper is going to float or if it's going to sink. If it, if it floats, okay, if it floats, are we going to say go Dodgers or go Angels? Right, right, right. What do we say? Which one? What does Katie oh, think? Katie, what do you think? Dodgers or Angels? Okay. Okay. So if it floats, Katie's saying we have to all say go Angels. Okay, but I want to see how many of you think that this piece of paper is going to float. Let's see. Hands Raise your up. hand if you think it's going to float. So Matt, Nira, and Katie. It's gonna float. Hands up. Who thinks it's gonna float? No way. Yes. All right. Let's see. Here we go. Da 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 The bead or the. I'll try the bead. It's bead. not that heavy, so we'll see. Let's yeah. see. It's floating. Oh, oh it's floating. Oh, okay, okay Mr. Matthias, you have to live up to your I deal. Do. Yeah, you told me you were going to come back. Yeah, last yeah. one is the I toothbrush. Did. Come put it in for us. I did. Are you keeping your promise? 
No, I. Oh man. Oh, okay, well, one of your come friends come are gonna come help us. Come on, Matt. Come, come on, on, Mr. Matt. <laughs> the other Matt will come. Let's see. What oh, do you think? Boy. Does see it feel heavy? Us. What's it? <laughs> it's floating. It's floating. <laughs> hey, but maybe this is smaller. So let's see. Let's try it on that one. Will it float? Whoa! And it's yeah, heavy. Yeah. It matches your shirt. Oh, oh, Is that pretty oh, cool? <laughs> we honestly thought it was going to sink. Good job. Good job. Maybe out of the rack. So, yes. Oh, Let's yeah. try that. There's Ducky. I'll try well, that. Well, oh, come on. Come on, Matt. This one. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's still floating on this end. Look at it. It's still trying to have it. It's kind of halfway. Okay, so what's next? Let's see. <laughs> so let's see. How about if we leave the other experiment for like tomorrow? Tomorrow. Tomorrow we are going to find out does it dissolve in water? Yes oh, or no? Cool. We're gonna find out if different things dissolve oh, yeah. in water. Okay. Oh, bring your thinking oh, caps. Put on your thinking your caps. Your Don't mouth. forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And also, don't forget that Elwin is. Ellen is hiring, and we want fabulous people. We love, we love to be a team. Oh, Come on in here. It's a great, great place to work, guys. Right and up. we just want you to be part of our team. So come on in and join us. Well, I'm, I'm kind of tall. My head gets <laughs> I'm the tall one in the group. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Can we turn and say goodbye to everybody, B? Oh, wait, wait, come on this side. Come on this way with oh. us. So this is T, E, A, and turn them around. And that's the end. Come join us. Thank you. Please come join us. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye Katie. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Are we ready for lunch?